I will start with resonance. Um, another important topic, if you are planning on taking organic chemistry, it is uh, very uh, crucial to the understanding of mechanisms and the stability of, co uh, of compounds and molecules. So let's begin. Uh, it says here that many molecules and ions are best described by writing two or more or drawing two or more Lewis structures and considering the real molecule or ion to be a hybrid of these structures. And that stems from that the idea that electrons can be divided into what we call localized, which means that they are either on one atom, so they could be a lone pair, or between two atoms, meaning a bond, a covalent bond. But you also have another type of, of electrons that are called delocalized electrons, which are actually spread out among more than one atom. So they don't have to be a bond, just one stationary bond or a lone pair. They can actually be spread out. What does that mean? And uh, we'll show you in a second. The delocalization of electrons lowers their energy and stabilizes them. What it does is that it spreads out the density, the electron density, and if you spread it out over a larger area, you actually stabilize it because those electrons are negatively charged. That's the idea. So let's begin and, and, and show you a, a very common example. A very common example is ozone, O3. Ozone is, is in the ozone layer, protects us from harmful UV radiation, yet it's toxic at ground level. So the EPA is always watching any industrial uh, manufacturers that may use it and they can actually pollute the environment. So let's start with ozone. Ozone, if you watched the last lecture or for the video, you knew how to draw Lewis structures. So you have three oxygen atoms, O, 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 that's six, six, and six, that's 18 valence. So we know one of the oxygens is in the middle, surrounded by two other oxygens. So we start with the outside, give them eight, So, so far, this one has eight, that one has eight, but we used how many? 16, eight plus eight is 16. So 18 mi minus 16 gives you two electrons that are left over. So they go on the central atom. Very well. So the question then is, is the oxygen in the middle happy? No, only has two, four, six. So if we run out of electrons, what do we have to do? Multiple bonds, in this case, a double bond. But the question should be, where does it come from? Where does the double bond come from? Does it come from the electrons, any of these pairs on this oxygen on your right or this oxygen on the left? And the answer is, is it has to be, can't be one or the other. It has to be both. What does that mean? Meaning you have two possible structures here. And in this case, you would take, let's say this lone pair, and I'm going to draw it on the bottom here and form a double bond. Okay, but then we also have another form. So again, we took this lone pair and formed a double bond. There it is. 
But we also have another form, and I'm going to draw another one on the top just so you can see the two possibilities. Where you take, let's say, one of these loan pairs. And by the way, it doesn't matter which loan pair you take, you can take any of these. So I'll just take this. And you would get a double bond now on this side. Okay, let me just give it a little bit of space because I'm going to need to draw an arrow in between. So again, this leads to that. This leads to. over here. Okay. So these two right here are both correct. You cannot simply say, okay, this is the, the Lewis structure and not that one. So that's why it says here, are best described by writing two or more Lewis structures. Here's a Lewis structure. Here's another Lewis structure. So what's happening is we draw an arrow in between them. And once again, just and this arrow right here, if you see it, it's a double headed arrow. It's a double headed arrow. This arrow is what we call, and I'm going to write it here resonance arrow and you have to use these arrows you cannot use you know the one way can't do that just the reaction or you're going to learn in gen chem 2 equilibrium arrows that's different for resonance what this means is that you have these structures always resonating by resonating is that uh in a sense, although that's not entirely true, is that they're going back and forth. So in reality, you might be looking and saying, okay, well, these are two actually going back and forth. Uh, these are like flickering back and forth. It starts, you know, one second, this is here and goes there, and then it switches to this one. But that's not true. What's happening is you have them both happening at the same time. And that's gonna get here to the hybrid. So notice that you have two structures. These, each of these is called a resonance structure or some call it resonance contributors. So again, each of these is a resonance structure. So again, they're not flickering back and forth. They are both happening at the same time. Uh, what does that mean? So a hybrid is usually what we need to describe that. So what you need to do is you say, okay, and I'm not going to ask you to draw the hybrid structure, but I'm going to show you basically if you take both of them. And what we use for a hybrid structure is we use dashed lines, those dashed lines mean that you have not a full double bond between each, but somewhere in between. So when chemists and physicists measured the length, as we talked about in the last lecture, the length of an uh, of a single bond versus the length of a double bond, you know, a single bond is longer, the double bond is shorter. So they expected to have a single bond here and a double bond there. Well, what they noticed is that no, what they had, what they got was they got something between one and a half and one and a half. 
And that actually summarizes it. So the, the idea is that this right here is your hybrid. So if you're asked the question, what is the correct structure? You would say both. Both are the correct structures. Both are the, the correct representation of ozone. Okay. An analogy, you'll probably see it in the book, but it's a very, very useful analogy, is if you have a, uh, uh, if you have yellow and blue, you make what? You make green. Correct? So green is a hybrid of both. You can't say to me, oh, the green looked blue yesterday. Oh, now it looks yellow. That's not happening. You have them both happening at the same time. Another one is, uh, the idea is you have, a, uh, usually this one students remember, so you have a donkey and you have a horse. And if you hybridize them, if you mix them together, you make a mule. So this one is hard, you know, to, to prove, to, harder to prove to someone that, oh, one day, you know, the mule is a donkey and then tomorrow it's going to be a horse. So it's both happening at the same time. So you can think of green as the hybrid right here. And you can think of the yellow and the blue as these individual structures. But when you're asked, okay, what's the correct representation? You would say all of the resonance structures are a representation. Okay, so yes, so you'll be asking, well, how do I know how to draw these? How do I know where to look for them? And by the way, in terms of localized versus delocalized, just so that we make, uh, make sure you understand that. Uh, so you can think of localized right here, localized. You can think of them as, you know, these single bonds or even this lone pair or that lone pair, right? So here, this is localized, for example. Delocalized are better lo looked at here. So these are delocalized because again, they are spread out over or among or over multiple atoms.